Hey everybody, it's Coach B and XG Combat Sports. Today's topic, gym etiquette. A couple of you have asked uh, some questions both online and in person regarding gym etiquette, so let me break it down. I'm going to give you general gym etiquette, transcendent, applicable in all gyms, and then also I'm going to give you a little bit of etiquette on how best to arrange a visit as a guest to another gym. So, First and foremost, I'm a big fan of the saying, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Know your P's, all right? So, timely arrival and what do you need? So know what time the class starts and know what and make sure that you have packed accordingly, right? So, we know what our class schedule is at NXG. It's our job as good students and instructors to make sure that we are on time and well prepared. This prevents us from having to restart classes um, to teach the component uh, that was displayed during the intro on which the majority of the class will then be taught and or it takes away from the other students when we have to either rehash it or we get to the point where they are ready to drill or to go but you don't know what to do, right? So. Being on time is huge because it allows us to get the totality of the lesson to be mentally prepared when the class starts and to prevent us from taking away from anyone else's time or any unnecessary confusion, if you will. What to bring? Is it a striking class? Do you have your boxing gloves? Do you have your shin pads? Do you have your mouthpiece? Is it a jiu-jitsu class? If so, is it gi or no gi? If it's gi, do I have my belt? Do I have my pants? Do I have my jacket? Do I have the things that I need? So know what you're going to do and arrive on time to do it. That would be number one, that proper preparation. Hygiene. This is a big one and it's also covered under those P's or proper preparations. Um, as much as it be possible, try to shower directly before class. If you have a job that does not permit that, we understand. That doesn't mean that you can't use appropriate amounts of deodorant and baby powder to make sure that you don't smell like a donkey when class starts. Even worse than that, do not show up in a funky, nasty, crusty, three-day-old, sweat-dried in the backseat of your car. Gee, I will fight you. Okay? Appropriate apparel. Make sure you have what you need for the class. Make sure it's clean and in good standing. Yourself. Keep yourself clean. Keep your nails trimmed. If you have anything that looks like it is growing on your body that does not belong there, any bumps, any lumps, any pus, any leaky spots, any seepy, weepy, sappy spots, stay off the floor. Go to the doctor and keep the funk away from us. Make sure you wear appropriate undergarments, both male and female. And then shoes. Of course, we all know no shoes on the mats, no bare feet off the mat. That keeps us from tracking all that nasty bacteria and fungal agents onto the mats that we are then going to roll on. But a lot of your medical studies have shown the majority of things con uh, contracted in a gym setting are because of the close quarters, person-to-person -person contact. Keep yourself, keep your clothes clean. Cover your skin, guys. How to be a good training partner. This is a portion of gym etiquette. Being on time, we already discussed that. Being hygienic, that plays in. Don't be a stunt man or a fish. That means every time your partner touches you, don't just fall over. Give them a chance to discover what truly is and is not working. Your job is not to make your partner look good it's to help your partner grow and learn. Now, don't break your toys either. What does that mean? Don't come in and try to kill everybody in the gym. If you break all your training partners, you won't have anyone to play with. Protect your friends at all costs, guys. Coaching. Coaching is established before the class ever starts. I know who is coaching the class. You should know when you arrive who is coaching the class. If someone different is coaching the class, they should either announce themselves or whoever the normal coach is should introduce them. So coaching duties are assigned. Now, why do I say this? I say this because when we get a little bit more skill than the guy standing next to us, or even when we perceive ourselves to have a little more skill than the guy standing next to us, 
It's very common for people to start coaching when it's not as helpful as you may think. Additionally, we have people that are in varying degrees of coaching capacity. They may be in an apprenticeship. They may be an assistant. We will use you and we will call upon you as needed. But enjoy the opportunity to continue being a student. And if you feel like you already know the material that's being taught that night, Focus on how the instructor is teaching it. Use that as a portion of your apprenticeship. But let the coaching duties be as they are established. Now, if you can give small input here and there that may be helpful to your partner, by all means, we want to build each other up. But make sure you're not coaching over, speaking over the coach, giving added instruction or showing new things outside of what the coach has said. I'm not talking in study groups. I'm not talking about during live roles, if we've got two brown belts over in the corner, or a couple purple belts, and they're discussing a technique or a methodology, have at it. That's all part of helping each other grow. But know what we are doing and know whose duty it is to be coaching at time that coaching is applicable. Now, I can summarize everything I just said by saying be polite and courteous to everyone. Show general respect Hygiene is something you should do out of self-respect as well as respect for people that um, you interact with. Being punctual, being on time is something we should try to make a habit in our life. Being a good partner, whether it's to our workmates, to our athletic friends, whatever the case is, be a genuinely good person. Um, carry yourself with politeness and courtesy. It will get you a long way in life. Now, very quick, what if you want to visit another gym? You want to visit another gym? Follow the proper preparation method. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Make a call. Shoot them a message. Hey, I'm going to be in town from this day to that day. What classes, if any, may you have available that I can drop in on? Check that off the list. Second question. What is the general attire? Do you have any specific gi colors or gi requirements? May I wear my patches from my existing affiliation? Do you require me to wear a blank gi? Or do you require me to rent one that has your affiliation patches on it? This happens. These variants occur from one gym to the other. Asking these questions can help you not show up ill-prepared. Or in some instances, it may give you an indication that you don't care for the vibe, so you choose to call somewhere else. Either way, a little bit of preventative maintenance up front will prevent you from not feeling like you know what's going on and by default not bringing proper respect either to your team and your coach or uh, an indication of disrespect based on the other team's etiquette, right? So at the end of the day, when in doubt, ask beyond all politeness and courtesy guys. Arrive on time, make sure that you and your belongings are clean and fresh, be a good training partner, which includes not coaching when it's not your time or your turn. Um, and like I said, just in general, be polite and courteous to everyone. NXG Combat Sports, guys. One love.